Hello everyone, welcome to the top five things you should know when you're studying jazz guitar. And I'm making this video because on the video about uh, ear training and uh, skills, the only skills you need to become a uh, jazz guitar player or a jazz musician, uh, linked under this video, um, I got a lot of reactions, a lot of positive reactions, a lot of uh, negative reactions, but one reaction said that I was focusing too much in this video on the skills you don't need instead of the skills you do need. Now, I, I do address the skills I think you do need in that video, but um, I'm talking a lot about skills you don't need, that's true. So this video is the top five things I think you should know, work on, understand as a jazz guitar player. And um, before we start, this, these are just my opinion, you know, they might be very far from the truth, but uh, this is what I experienced playing, uh, working with other people, both as a, a violin player, playing with other guitar players, and also as a gypsy jazz or jazz guitar player myself. Um, to explain to you a little bit how I made this list, uh, I wrote down lots of uh, things I thought could make this video and then I took a lot of time to make an order uh, and in the end I came up with the top five things and they are general things. So I'm not going to talk about, you know, you got to know this skill or this arpeggio or just general things, uh, kind of a bird's eye view of being a jazz guitar player. Okay, let's start. Number five, technique or good technique will save your ass. And there's a good reason why this is on the list. It's on the list because there's this saying going around, I read it on forums, I, I hear people say it like, uh, technique is not important uh, or uh, this guy is just only focusing on technique or uh, technique doesn't mean anything. It's all about the music. And I understand what's being said. And as a philosophy, I think it's okay, right? If you are just playing a concert to show off your technique, the whole concert, every song, the whole evening, then this you might not produce the most interesting music possible and might be quite boring to listen to. So as a philosophy, to go on stage and, and not focus solely on your technique, it's a great thing. But I don't think it's wise to take this philosophy as a guideline for practicing a guitar. Because in the end, everything that you want to express, all the things that you have in your head, all the lines that you've been studying, if you don't have technique, you will never be able to produce the notes. And maybe you'll be able to produce them, but maybe the sound is off, or the timing is off, or, you know, it's sloppy. And of course, there's other things you could work on separately, but most of these things will become much easier when your technique is good. And um, the, the interesting thing is, my background as a guitar player is strictly in gypsy jazz. And the one thing that gypsy jazz guitar players focus on a lot is technique. And I've thought about why that is, but the reason I think is because the rhythm section in a gypsy jazz band, so usually it's a it's a rhythm guitar player or, or two, two rhythm guitar players and the bass, they're, they're kind of static. They're not really reacting to what the solo player is doing, because if that would be the case, then there would be breaks in the rhythm and you don't want that. So it is all upon the solo player to uh, create interest in the solo, that you, you cannot really have a conversation with the rhythm guitar. Well, it's possible, but let's say the standard sound of Gypsy Jazz or the way Django Reinhardt played with his group, the rhythm section is pretty much a static thing. So in order to uh, be interesting as a lead guitar player, 
usually it is necessary to be able to play fast runs. In addition to playing nice lines and, and, and beautiful stuff, you got to have this uh, technique to play fast runs. So for gypsy jazz guitar players, working on technique is something very natural. But in straight ahead jazz, this is much less common. I see many uh, jazz guitar players who have great ideas and, and um, they have a nice general sound, but they don't have the technique to play many of, of the more complicated ideas they have very clearly. It's, it's kind of sloppy or... Um, you don't hear uh, all the notes that you want to hear. So I think that even though technique is not the most important thing, it is very important if you want to be able to fully express yourself. Uh, and the, the solution to that is to practice technique every day. And I always say in my workshops, practice what you want, practice what you love, right? You want to practice this tune because you love it, practice that tune. Don't feel that you're uh, obligated to practice a certain thing because then you will get bored with practicing. The only exception to this way of practicing is technique. There's no way around it. You have to practice technique and that is something that builds slowly over time. So you need to practice it every day for, I always say like 15 minutes. 15 minutes of very focused technique practice and then if you do that, uh, with a metronome and very uh, diligently and paying attention, listening to yourself, recording yourself, being critical of yourself, you should be able to build a considerable technique in two to three years. Now, if you don't know where to start, I made a, a lot of videos about technique. So I will link one under this video and that technique, uh, that video itself has many links to other technique videos I made. And uh, I, that video is, is focused on gypsy jazz picking technique, because that's my technique. I play with the gypsy jazz picking um, technique. But I think that the exercises in those videos could uh, serve uh, alternate pickers and economy pickers as well. Um, the, the exercises can be quite challenging, and uh, you could probably add your own exercises if you are alternate picker. So, number five, the number five thing you should know Good technique will save your ass. Okay, number four. Um, work on every tempo. Or let's say work on many different tempos. Another thing I, I hear a lot of people say is, oh, especially in Gypsy Jazz, this happens. Like, oh, uh, this guy plays too fast. Uh, it's too fast. You know, why is he playing so fast? Uh, Django didn't play that fast. Well, that is not true. There are many recordings of Django playing super fast. Um, but there's also, of course, many recordings where Django is playing medium tempo. And I do agree that there are there is a tendency in Gypsy Jazz to play everything super fast. Um, so by I don't mean by practicing every tempo that your goal should be to be to be able to play super fast. That's not the goal. The goal is so that you are ready to play well in different tempos. And it doesn't work if you only practice medium tempo. Because if you only practice medium tempo, you will be very comfortable in a medium tempo. But the moment you have to play a ballad, uh, your lines won't work anymore. Because you need to be able to play with more a freer timing uh, to be expressive, I think, in ballads. And if it, the tempo gets very fast, your technique... Uh, or you won't be able to play your lines anymore because you never practice them that fast. So that's another thing. People always say practice slow. Well, I agree. Practice slowly to make sure that everything is clean. But if you want to be able to practice those lines or to play those lines fast during a gig, you also need to practice them fast. Not only practice them fast, but you need to practice them fast too because you got to uh, work on your reflexes and your technique to be able to play that fast. So it's very important that you work on many different tempos. Uh, I once heard uh, somebody say there's seven tempos. I'm sure I can list them all, but it's something like um, ballads, walking ballads, mm, uh, medium, fast, medium, fast, uh, super fast, and there's one more missing there. But there is at least five tempos that you could work on 
or at the very least, balanced, medium, and reasonably fast. Okay, number four, let's go to uh, number three. Number three is learn the conventions of the style you're aiming to play and how that relates to the guitar. Um, because there's many different styles of jazz, right? There is uh, swing or, or even earlier than swing. There is um, gypsy jazz, you have uh, cool jazz, you have bebop, you have hardbop, you have avant-garde. There's many different styles. And all those styles, they have their, their own conventions. Some things that you got to know, things that you uh, got to understand to be able to work with musicians that already are very well versed in that style. And of course, uh, if you are a jazz player, uh, you will find similarities in all the styles, but there's very specific things that if you know them, you will understand how to respond to other musicians that play in the style. Uh, you will understand what they mean when they give directions or you understand what happens if you're on stage and somebody looks at you, you know what they mean, right? So for instance, uh, uh, training solos, right? That, that happens in pretty much every style. But when people look at you after the solo or they, they do this, then you know, okay, we got to trade fours or we got to trade eights. Uh, but you know, I, ne I don't play uh, a lot of New Orleans uh, swing, but maybe, in those bands, when they look at you, it means that you had got a all solo together. You know, I don't know, but you you gotta learn these conventions, and not only in the realm of uh, what you gotta know in communication, but also certain sounds. Right. So if you show up to your uh, cool jazz cool jazz gig with your strat and uh, have a distortion, it's probably not the right sound. If you um, show up to a gypsy jazz. Uh, gig and you start playing rhythm like that's that's not the right rhythm style if you show up to a big band as a uh, as a guitar player and you start playing rhythm like a gypsy jazz player that's not what they want they want more of the freddie green kind of sound so before you uh plan to work in those styles or or go to a jam sessions make sure you know the conventions and it's never been easier than now there's there's many YouTube videos that talk about it. You can find all the masters in every style, listen to them, learn the conventions, practice them on your instruments, seek out the advice of experts in the style and, and check with them if, if you're doing it correctly or, or check with them what you gotta listen to. Sometimes it's just uh, being pointed in the right direction to the artist you have to listen to, to hear the conventions being played the right way. That's my number three. Number two is learn those tunes. And this is very important. Uh, you can practice your scales and your arpeggios, or you can watch my videos and practice all the lines, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't know tunes. And you can say, well, well I, have a, uh, I have the real book, I have the iReal app, and I, I have those too, I love them, I love them. But you got to learn the tunes, both for practicing everything, all the theoretical stuff you're learning at home, and also for when you have a gig or jamming or, ja or a jam. If you don't know the tunes, it probably means that you're not really a competent player. Because if you've done your work and you studied playing solos in a real life situation, that means that you're, you're playing a tune. That means that you've practiced tunes. So if you don't know any tunes, um, that's usually a sign that something's not right or not yet, not yet there in your playing. So it's, the solution is easy, just learn the tunes. And if you don't know which tunes to learn, um, seek out the advice of an expert and, and ask him what are the 20 most often jammed uh, tunes that are played at jams and learn those. Um, and it, Again, this goes to the style, to being able to, to know the conventions of the style. If you are, if you want to play bebop, go to bebop session as a, a listener and write down all the tunes that are being played, you know, and take that list to an expert and ask them, these tunes, are those the, the right tunes to learn or are there, are there any other, do you have any additions or some tunes maybe I shouldn't learn? 
same for every style. You go to a uh, Gypsy Jazz Jam. Um, before you go, make sure that you know what the tunes are that are going to be played. Because if you show up at the Gypsy Jazz Jam and, and you um, shout uh, Ergen or, uh, I don't know, some other uh, giant steps, uh, you know, that's not the tunes that are being played in a Gypsy Jazz Jam. And if you go to a straight head session and you and you start calling Coquette or Them the Rise, those are not the right tunes. Uh, at least you know some tunes in another style, but uh, to get back to the original point, you gotta learn tunes and you gotta learn many tunes. I'd say it should be your goal to know at least, know at least 50 tunes um, in the style that you're aiming to play. And by knowing the tunes, I mean knowing both the chords and the theme. And I know that I've said in the previous video that it's not necessary to know the theme for every tune, but what I was talking about was a professional gig situation where you're called to do a gig and the, the band leader uh, chose some tunes, some weird tunes that you didn't that you don't know yet or they're not standards and he hired you to, to be comp, uh, to, to comp. And there's one rehearsal and now there's no time for you to learn all the themes and it's not necessary because you're not gonna play the themes. But just as a jazz musician, it's very important that you actually know lots of tunes. So I think to start 20, but 50 is actually, I think a minimum if you are, if you wanna be a professional, but even that is not really enough. I think 100 is closer to, uh, the goal. I know at least 100 tunes in Gypsy Jazz, uh, probably more, and uh, many of the tunes are also crossovers with uh, straight head jazz because they're played in both styles. But you got just you just gotta know them, and you don't have to know them in every key. Just know them in the in the keys that are played in. Some tunes are played in several keys. Then know them in in all those keys. Um, maybe know some intros for the tunes. You know, just things that will enable you to function well in jams and also in like pickup gigs, you know, where there's like a pickup band and they make a quick set list. You just gotta know all those tunes. Uh, and then my number one tip, and maybe you've saw this one coming, but the most important thing to work on are ear training and modes. <laughs> of course not. No, the most important thing that you should know as a studying jazz guitar is that transcribing is the best thing you can do to train whatever, be it uh, vocabulary, phrasing, timing, rhythmic understanding, conventions, your ears, um, I, I'd say even technique sometimes, although there's you need to do that separately too, but by transcribing artists to admire within your style. And I, I know I'm not talking about writing it down. You could write it down, the, how, whatever you need to do to remember it, but by transcribing and playing along with uh, the original recordings. And you don't, have, don't even have to do complete solos, you could do just the A part, or maybe just, you know, two phrases and then just play them over and over with the original recording until you can match the, the sound and the phrasing and the dynamics and the timing and the notes, of course. You will learn so much by doing that. Much more than you could ever learn um, by going to a teacher or studying a scale or studying an arpeggio. Those things can all be great, but by transcribing actual musicians playing music at the top of their game, to gain uh, that insight is invaluable. Um, I always describe it like, if I transcribe a, a let's say I'm transcribing a, a Django solo, and by playing it, I get to experience what it, what it feels like to play a genius solo like that, by playing it along with the original recording, by matching the, in, the, the dynamics and the intention with, with, with which he plays that, you, you, 
you start to feel what it's what it what it must be like to be able to play a solo like that. And um, now, if you play your own solo, it doesn't feel quite like that. You know, you got work to do, and it doesn't matter who you describe, as long as it's somebody that's really considered to be a master in your style, right? And it doesn't even even have to be the same instrument. I described lots of Char Charlie Parker. I've described, I've described pretty much everybody at this point. And uh, sometimes I'm I describe complete solos. Sometimes I describe just one phrase or a bridge or the A part. And I played along and that is very enjoyable. First, it's very enjoyable and it is very challenging at times. And it's very revealing to what is possible. Uh, so, transcribe, just transcribe your ass off every day and it doesn't matter if you can retain everything you transcribe, that's not the point. Um, I said it in my previous video, I'll say it again. It's not about the results, it is about the work. Care about the work, not the results. I didn't come up with that, I got it from someone else, I don't remember who it is, on YouTube. Um, but if you care about the work and realize that by doing the work you will improve even if you're not retaining everything that you've transcribed, then uh, it's all good. You know, you won't get too frustrated uh, by uh, the fact that you're not being able to remember all the solos that you transcribed. That's not what it's about. It's about being immersed in the vocabulary and the phrasing and the timing of a great artist. So that is my top five. Um, I can imagine that you, that you think that there should have been other things on this list. I want to know what those are. Let them know in the comments and, uh, you know, who knows, I might react to that in a later video. Until then, bye.